despite major advancements in robotics, achieving both high mobility and energy efficiency has remained elusive until now. Researchers at the Singapore University of Technology and Design have developed Atom, a dual mobility robot that flies and rolls using just two actuators. Unlike traditional hybrid robots that rely on extra motors and complex mechanisms, Atom leverages a mono wing and counter rotating actuators to provide trade offs, directional flight, rolling, and turning with impressive energy efficiency. Its design addresses key flaws in previous attempts, such as limited terrain adaptability and one directional flight. Adam also recovers from any landing orientation without manual help, thanks to the small frame and center of gravity. Its ability to navigate rough terrain and fly in both directions sets it apart. It can roll and turn on various surfaces while it's able to ascend and descend at 15 degree gradients with or without incremental stops. With potential applications in disaster response, environmental monitoring, and urban surveillance, Adam demonstrates how minimalist bio-inspired design can lead to robust and efficient real-world robotic solutions. And solutions are all part of being a designer, so let's check one out in our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Eaton Freedom NEMA Auxiliary Contact is a compact contact block available for reliable integration into Freedom Series NEMA starters. Weighing just 0.15 pounds, it features NCI, EC, and low functions for precise control. Certified CUL listed and backed by a one-year warranty, this auxiliary contact is ideal for enhancing timing and coordination in industrial control circuits. The Eaton Freedom NEMA Auxiliary Contact is designed for use in reversing motor starter applications. Check it out today by visiting mauser.com or by clicking the link below. Terminal numbering helps simplify wiring and panel assembly and aids in maintenance and diagnostics. To learn more, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. If you've ever wired or installed relays, you probably know that there's a pretty confusing numbering pattern and you just kind of have to follow the numbers that are on the schematic. Believe it or not, this set of numbers is not random. If I take a look at this relay that I've got, I see numbers 11, 12, and 14. This can be thought of as two sets of numbers, really. One, one, and one all represent the first set of contacts. That's the first number. I also see 21, 22, 24. That's the second set of contacts. I also have an, ex an auxiliary block that has 63, 64, 53, 54, which represents the fifth and sixth set of contacts. Now moving on to the second number, I see one and two. One and two represent a normally closed set of contacts. Three and four represent a normally open set of contacts. So when I see 11, 12, and 14, that means contact set one, 11 and 12 are the normally closed set, and 14 will be my normally open contact. On the auxiliary relay, 53 and 54 represent three and four, another normally open set of contacts. So while it is still confusing, you can use these numbers to translate what status you expect, whether open or closed, when you see a relay or other terminal-based device energized or not. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. Are you a smart bite or a smart bit? Let's find out in our control automation quiz, Smart Bit. Okay, in our Smart Bit quiz, you must match the right answer to its question in less than three seconds. The questions are scored using actuator output percentage, and today we'll be testing your knowledge on the voltmeter loading effect. At the end, you'll see if you're a smart bite or smart bit. Let's begin with our first question for 25%. In a high impedance circuit, what causes the voltmeter loading effect to distort measurements? Is it A, low input resistance of the voltmeter, or B, high internal resistance of the voltage source? And the answer is A, low input resistance of the voltmeter. A voltmeter with low input resistance draws current from the circuit, 
altering the voltage it's meant to measure. This is the core of the loading effect. Okay, on to our next question worth 25%. How does the loading effect alter readings in low current signal paths? Is it A, it increases the measured voltage, or B, it decreases the measured voltage? And the answer is B, it decreases the measured voltage. The voltmeter draws additional current reducing voltage across the component being measured, leading to a falsely low reading. Okay, let's move on to our final question worth 50%. In precision analog circuit testing, what is the primary strategy to avoid voltmeter loading effects? Is it A, use a lower voltage source, or B, use a buffer amplifier between the circuit and voltmeter? And the answer is B, use a buffer amplifier between the circuit and voltmeter. A buffer provides high input and low output impedance isolating the measurement device from the circuit and eliminating loading errors. Well, how did you do? Are you a smart bite or bit? You can have another try at it right now by clicking the link on your screen. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.